Are you ready to shift your brilliance? Are you prepared to take control of the steering wheel of your life? If so, grab a pen and notebook and write down what resonates with you as you engage with Simon T. Bailey. And when you release your brilliance, you live from the inside out and you literally come alive. Something brilliant is about to happen to you today on Living by Design. Did you know that you were born to be brilliant? Well, my guest today knows all about that because he actually wrote the book on it. Release Your Brilliance is a bestseller. It was ranked number 17 out of 100 books that are being read in corporate America. And my guest today, Mr. Simon T. Bailey, says that if you learn how to release your brilliance and then harness your brilliance, you'll be able to get out of that old rut that you're currently living in and you'll discover how to ignite your creativity, enhance your productivity, and really understand accountability. So today, I wanna to welcome Mr. Simon T. Bailey. Simon, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, so good to see you, good to be here. Yes, and I am so happy that you agreed to talk to our viewers because they really need to hear from you, Mr. Simon T. Bailey. You are awesome. You're everywhere, you're global. We're here today at Harrison College and I understand that you are a strategic partner with Harrison College. Let's just kind of start off by talking about your relationship with Harrison. Yeah, I'm here. so excited. With Harrison College's corporate partnerships, we have created a strategic alliance where we've taken the whole brilliance concept and methodology, and Harrison has amazing relationships here in the state of Indiana and certainly here in Indianapolis. And such companies as UPS has uh, stepped up and they now teach all of their emerging leaders our whole brilliance concept. So as a result of aligning ourselves with Harrison College, which is a 111-year-old institution here, an amazing business school that really is doing amazing work, we get a chance to share with people every day that you are absolutely positively brilliant, no matter what walk of life you come from, no matter what your ethnicity is, no matter what you have been through, Harrison recognizes that brilliance and is gonna help you release it and unleash it. Well, I am really excited to hear about that because that gives me and my viewers a better understanding of Harrison College because of course they're college and you know people come here and they come to learn but it's really nice to know that they're getting out into the community oh, and going to you know just going beyond yes. the norm that's yes. awesome that's so many good. schools you know they just kind of exist and say okay we right. just want to you know get people through the mill just educate you. Mill. Yes. But, but Harrison really looks at the whole student awesome. and how do you become not just better for business but better in life Awesome. I love that concept. Now let's talk about you and your work and you're doing so much. And for my viewers, you already know the story, but when I first met you, I didn't even know who you was. A friend of mine handed me Release Your Brilliance several years ago and she told me, she said, you need to read this book and you need to know who this person is. I read that book and I have to tell you, Simon, it changed my life. It absolutely changed my life. Please talk about that book, Release Your Brilliance, because it's a bestseller. And number seven ranked out of 100 books that corporations are reading, that's huge, that's massive. Talk about that book and how it can help people. So Release Your Brilliance, I wrote it from a very deep place. Uh, Release Your Brilliance is really understanding that all of us have potential, we have insight, we have genius in us. But after working with almost a thousand organizations over the last decade since leaving Disney to go out on my own, mm -hmm. what I realized, your brilliance is released in an environment where you are celebrated rather than tolerated. Mm. And when you're in this environment, you ultimately realize you're not there to make an impression, but you're really there to leave an imprint. Mm. And when you leave an imprint, what you start to realize is I'm not here to compete against anyone uh, for my space, my spot. I'm here to complete what I've been assigned to do. So Re Release Your Brilliance is really the methodology and the passage to discovering that everything you need to succeed in any economy is inside of you. But you've gotta be in the environment that draws it out of you, hence we're at an educational institution. Exactly. The word education comes from educari, which means to draw out. So my brilliance is drawn out of me when I'm in that environment that invites me to be my very best. Wow, 
that is absolutely massive because I like what you said about we're not here to compete. We're here to complete whatever our purpose is, why we were born, because we not, none of us were born by accident. So there are so many people, Simon, who get caught up in competing. And so-and-so is doing this, and I want to do that, and because I can't do that, I'm angry, and, and all those toxic emotions start taking over. How can they let that mindset go? And Because your, your book, your current book coming out, is called Shift Your Brilliance. Right. So how can they let that mindset go and start shifting into a place where they can be complete? Yeah, so there are three questions that I really want everyone listening to us to answer. Mm -hmm. Question number one is, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? Question number two, what would I do if no one paid me to do it? And question number three, what makes me come alive? The reason those three questions are important is because if you, after you release your brilliance, if you're gonna shift your brilliance, you have to first of all stop comparing yourself mm. to everyone and everything. One of the things I taught years ago, and I still teach it to this day, is sometimes people suffer from the comparison inferiority complex, yes. meaning I compare where I am to where you are. Yes. And if you're further down the path than I am, I start to say to myself, well, who does she think she is? And who does he think he is? And we totally miss out on, well, what do I have within me? So when you step back and answer those three questions, what you're really doing is putting the mirror in front of your face to say, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? Not comparing myself to anybody else. What would I do if no one paid me to do it? And then what makes me come alive? So really you are shifting to becoming the CEO of you incorporated. That's powerful. Absolutely powerful, and I 100% agree. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Good stuff because we do get so caught up in everyone else and what they're doing, and it just it it takes it wastes time. Totally, it totally, totally. wastes time. I want to get more into that, so we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to find out a whole lot more about not just releasing your brilliance but shifting your brilliance. We'll be right back. More in my life. Stephanie, you look like a million bucks. Thank you. I won the lottery. So you can shop anywhere. Why household furniture? Before I won the lottery, I was working two jobs, and uh, they financed me, and they really understood my situation. So why would I go anywhere else? So here at Household Furniture, everybody's a winner. Yeah. At Household Furniture, get comfort, quality, and style at monthly payments you can afford. Ask about our in-store financing and cash discounts. Don't make the rental mistake. Come on to Household Furniture. Next time on Living by Design. Today's show is a very heart-touching story and it's very near and dear to my heart because it's a topic of domestic violence. And it would just really turn violent and then he would flip it around and say, well, if you hadn't done this. The Coalition Against Domestic Violence started in 1980. It was founded by five wonderful women. Don't miss Living by Design, Sundays at 6 p.m. on WHMB TV 40. Welcome back, and we're here with Mr. Brilliance himself, Simon T. Bailey. Now, Simon, before the break, we talked a lot about how people get caught up in competing with other folks and being envious and spending all their time backstabbing and betraying other people instead of focusing on their own brilliance. So let's, let's just talk a little bit more about that. How can they start getting out of that mindset? I know you talked about the question that they have to ask themselves, and that's great. But what's some other tiny little steps that they can begin to take so that they can make that shift? Number one, journal. I think Ooh. everyone should think about journaling. When you journal, you begin to write down your thoughts as to where you are, but you're also talking about what you imagine and what you see in your mind's eye. Mm -hmm. The second thing I invite people to think about is putting together a personal board of directors. A personal board of directors is made up at least of three to five people who get you, celebrate you, and will challenge you to be better than you ever have been. You should get with them at least once every 30 days and begin to talk about, here's what I've learned, here's what I'm sensing, and here's where I'm going. 
they also become like an accountability partnership that you form because they're going to hold your feet to the fire. But they have to be people who are pro you. If they are not pro you, invite them to find their happiness elsewhere. These three to five individuals, they will come from a different worldview. They will see things through a different lens. And a part of connecting with them is to understand how they are seeing things and how you should begin to approach and think about things differently as you design your life. Mm -hmm. And the reason this is so important, so much of the talk right now is, you know, it's all about the top 1% in the world and, and all the wealth that they have. And what about the other 99%? And what I tell people, don't worry about the 1%. Be the best you that you can possibly be for where you are. The third thing I think people need to do is be very mindful of how they talk about themselves. Mm. And is there an opportunity to upgrade their verbal software? There's almost one million words in the English language. The average person uses about 100 to 200 words. And when we drill down, it's those key words that you use that create the design of your life. So how do you become very mindful of what am I saying, who am I associating with, and what am I writing down in my journal? Yeah, and I have to absolutely give you kudos for that because, Simon, you are my hero, and I live according to your principles. That's actually what inspired me to write my second book, Lies, Love, and Light, because it's all about the self-talk. You can't tell yourself negative things and expect to accomplish great things. So I totally 100% agree with that. Now, I know you also founded the Brilliance Institute and you're based out of Miami or? Orlando. Orlando, Orlando Florida. Florida. Okay, yeah. I know you're in mm -hmm. Florida. So talk a little bit about that and your company and what, what your company does. Yeah, we are so excited with the work that we're doing with Brilliance Institute. We have an opportunity to work with corporations all over the world mm -hmm. who really want us to focus on growing their most important asset that being people. Right. So we have created a very simple model that helps people understand their personal brilliance, leadership brilliance, team brilliance, and service brilliance. Mm -hmm. So personal brilliance is really uh, what we've talked about thus far, is how do people bring their best self to work and to life and really be an asset in the organization instead of a liability. Uh, leadership brilliance is how do you bring out the best in people? Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was uh, at, in Memphis, Tennessee with an organization and they just went public. And when the CEO came into the ballroom, everyone stood up and gave him this standing ovation. And I was like, okay, was this on cue? Because it was just so out of the norm. And one of the ladies sitting next to me, she didn't know that I was a speaker. She said, he is so awesome, he's amazing. And I'm like, where in the world in this time have people said all these nice things about a CEO? And I just thought it was a one-off, but I heard it from other people. They love their CEO. And I said to Eric, what is it that you do? And he says, I'm not here to lead them. I'm here to serve them. So when I talk about leadership brilliance, leadership brilliance is understanding your most important customer is not the customer who pays the bills or buys the product or service. Your most important customer and your number one customer are your employees. And when employees feel connected, then that leads to team brilliance. And so when I worked for Disney, one of the greatest failures that I had in leading a team is that I ran an adult daycare center. And I said, you've got to come to me and get the answers, instead of realizing that I had brilliant men and women around me who wanted to be successful, but they just needed their dysfunctional leader who had a need to be in control, who was just over the top a control freak, needed to learn how to chill and invite a diverse perspective of the team. So that's team brilliance. And then service brilliance is really understanding how do we move and shift from a customer service department to a customer love mindset. Amazing. Yeah. So that's what we do. That's what we do at Brilliance Institute. And when we teach it, so in partnership with Harrison College, we get to teach that curriculum. Yes. We've done a number of things online. And very soon we're launching Mobile Business Academy, which people will be able to download 12 lessons that we've taught in an audio podcast interview type of format 
It's only about 10 minutes in length, but it then has a workbook that's attached to it. So we're really, really excited about Mobile Business Academy that we're going to be launching as a part of Brilliance Institute. That's amazing. Now, go ahead. I want you to give your website because I want all of my viewers to read everything about you, Simon. That's very kind. SimonTBailey.com. Okay. Uh, then go to our website, click on uh, all of our great information there. They can follow us on social media. Uh, and uh, on Twitter, I'm at Simon T. Bailey, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus. And we started something new on Instagram where we're doing branded image posts that have a, a really pithy quote from one of the seven books that I've written. And it's something that we put our hashtag of Shift Your Brilliance on it, and people can share and repost it throughout social media. Awesome. Love it. Absolutely love it. Simon, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to dig all the way back to Simon's childhood and talk a little bit about that. Coming up on Living Bodies Design. Tom, you and I have been customers here at Household Furniture for a long time. Oh, yeah. You come out to my house, well, you think you walk into Household Furniture. Okay, so you've got dining room furniture? Yes. Televisions? Yep. Bedroom suits? Yep. And appliances? Yeah. It's all here at Household Furniture. New name brand living room groups, bedroom suits, TVs, and appliances. Plus, ask about our in-store financing and cash discounts. Don't make the rental mistake. Come on to Household Furniture. So I took all my pain and I channeled that into what I wanted to do. I channeled that into helping others and making a difference in the lives of others and that's what brought me here today and I just want you guys to know that it doesn't matter where you're been, where you've been and what you've been through. It matters where you're going and how you get to where you're trying to get to. Wow. You are not a victim of your past. I used to think that in order for me to be successful that I needed to have blonde hair, blue eyes and white skin. In fact, I despise being born into the family that I was born in. So it's so interesting when I hear your story, Kathy. It so relates to me because when I was 15 years of age, when I was 15 years of age, I was on the basketball court and this little boy said to me, he said, you are black as tar, you are so ugly. And I felt so beneath the earth that I ran back to my parents' house and I got the keys to my mom's car and I went into the garage. I closed the garage door behind me and I put the key in the ignition. I was preparing to take my life because I didn't want to live because I didn't think I had any value or, or any purpose for being here. And when I was about to turn the ignition, something said, don't do it. I will not be able to stand before you today and tell you my truth if I hadn't walked through that. Now, fast forwarding, um, when people ask me, how are you doing? I'm like, I am Godiva fine because I love who I am and I love who I've become. And even at 45 years of age, I realized that what I went through 30 years ago, I had to go through that to become who I am today. So I want to let you know that wherever you are in life, you are valuable, you are loved, you are appreciated, and no matter what you have been through, it's just a piece to the puzzle. I believe I can achieve greater things. I believe I can balance both work and school. Work in a field I enjoy. Provide more for my family. I believe I can push aside the excuses and start on the career path that I deserve. Believe in yourself, we certainly do. Since we opened our doors in 1902, Harrison College has over 75,000 graduates, offering over 30 programs in a wide variety of fields, including culinary arts, healthcare, IT, veterinary, criminal justice, and business. Career-focused, quality education with a student-centered atmosphere. Enjoy the flexibility of day and evening classes available online or at one of our 12 campuses. Plus, you may be able to receive some form of financial aid. And we have a tuition freeze program, so you have peace of mind when budgeting for your education. We work to connect graduates with potential employers. I called. I made the call. Now it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. Start your enrollment today. Classes are forming now. 
Harrison College, career focused, success driven. Hi, we're back and we are talking today with Mr. Simon T. Bailey, who is Mr. Brilliance himself. But I want to just go all the way back, Simon, to your childhood, and I just want you to talk a little bit about what inspired you to go down this path? What did you experience in your childhood that told you, I need to shift something here and make something happen different in my life? Well, when I was growing up in Buffalo, New York, I went to Catholic school for the first few years. Mm -hmm. And then when I got ready to go into the eighth grade, my parents put me into a public school. Major shock to my system, PS number 68 in Buffalo, New York. And when I got ready to go to high school, my parents sent me to McKinley High School, which is a trade school still to this day in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. And at this trade school, I had to take carpentry, sheet metal, air conditioner, refrigeration, and plumbing. And Kathy, I failed all of the subjects my freshman year. I mean, I'm talking like flunked. Mm. So at, simultaneously, I went out for football, got cut, mm. went out for basketball. They said, obviously, you're not the next Magic Johnson, <laughs> got cut. I went out for track and field, right? I'm like, OK, I can run, right? Mm. They said, we think you should probably run cross country. <laughs> so it was oh like so my parents like said, okay, now that you've totally embarrassed the family name, this is probably not the best high school. And then let's just be frank, I'm a guy. Obviously, I was not going to pick up any girls because I had nothing going for me in ninth grade. So they uh, transferred me over to Bennett High School mm -hmm. for my sophomore year. And that's where I met Miss Rita Lankus, who is my English teacher. And as she got to know me, she said, young man, I want you to write an original speech. And I said, OK. And I went home and wrote a speech. And she said, oh, by the way, I want you to give it in front of the entire high school assembly. And so I did it. And that was the beginning of this life that I've been living for almost 30 years now. I found my lane. I found my thing. I found my voice. I didn't know I had a platinum tongue. I didn't know that being on stage in front of people was my gift. And it was like this oneness. And still to this day, whenever I go back to Buffalo, New York, and I run into old high school classmates, they'll say, do you have that speech that you gave that day? And I'm like, really? But here's the thing. What's interesting, I, uh, Francis, Florence Shen wrote the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It. The book came out in 1925. Mm -hmm. And she says that the, the bell was seeking the phone. You have to find the thing that wants you. And what I realized, I was in a trade high school trying to fit, and I was a misfit because that wasn't my lane. When I shifted into another high school, another setting, another environment, I found my lane. Not only did I graduate from high school, but I was senior class president. And so that became very etched in my mind from 16, 17, 18 years of age to realize that we have to find that place where we belong and everything clicks in that moment and when it does you totally come alive so to continue on because the story gets better uh, my mom and dad dropped me off at Morehouse College and at the end of my freshman year at Morehouse College they called and said we don't have the money to send you back to Morehouse nor do we have money to bring you back home to Buffalo but oh we do God. love you <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm living in Atlanta, Georgia, drug infested community, mattress on the floor, bright green bean bag from the 70s, a couple of milk crates turned over uh, with a black and white TV on top of it with a hanger hanging out of the back of the TV with a piece of aluminum foil wrapped around the hanger. Mm -hmm. It's like a bad situation, right? And I'm on public transportation working at a hotel uh, making a whopping $5.10 an hour where they left the light on for me. And uh, here I am, 19 years of age, college dropout. So gone to high school, kind of like found my lane, but I go away from that thing that I really could do because I'm trying to find my place in the world mm -hmm. because the world invites you to conform and conformity robs you of creativity. Mm. If you continue to conform and do what everyone else wants you to do, you never tap into you or your life that has been designed and destined for you. So um, I'm bumbling around Atlanta, Georgia, on public transportation, wearing $20 hand-me-down suits that I have been dry cleaned so much, when you walked outside, the sun would reflect off the suit. Mm. <laughs> it was just a bad situation. And I transferred my one-year credits from Morehouse over 
to Georgia State University. I was offered a job to work at the Ritz Carlton Hotel, mm -hmm. but born, being born in the ghetto of Buffalo, New York, living in the ghetto of Atlanta, Georgia, I didn't have a concept of what a Ritz Carlton Hotel was. Yeah, exactly. So I turned it down. And so many years later, when I reflect back on that experience, what I realized, it's not who you are that holds you back from shifting your brilliance. It's who you think you're not that holds you back from releasing and connecting and shifting your brilliance. So I eventually did go back to school. I was just on the 10-year plan. And my parents said, it took you 10 years to finish your undergrad degree. And I said, because you didn't pay, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. But that's that's my that's my backstory. That's the story that most people don't know. Yeah, and I love that because so many people could have just stopped, dropped, laid down, had a pity party, moved to Pity City, unpacked their bags, and that would have just been their life from then on out. So you did exactly what we're all about here on the Living My Design Show. You've got to pick yourself up. It doesn't matter if you fall down or get knocked down. You've got to get up and release your brilliance, and you did that. Now, how did you end up at uh, Disney? Because I know you spent some time there. Yeah, so uh, about uh, 22 years ago, I was at a single soiree, and a young lady walked into the room and saw me from across the ballroom and just had to have me. So. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Now, if you ever meet her, don't tell her I'm sharing this story. This is just between us and your viewers. But uh, uh, Renee and I got married, and she's the reason I got to Orlando. Well, in working there in Orlando, I was working for Hyatt Hotels and went to work for the Orlando Convention and Visitors Bureau. And if you live in Disney, or if you live in Orlando, either you work for Disney or you work for Disney. So I started interviewing with Disney, and after almost two years of interviews, 10 interviews, and a 10-page psychological analysis from Gallup, they finally hired me. I think they, were, they just felt sorry for a brother, and they're like, let's just hire him. Uh, hire him. So. Uh, I uh, went to work for them and it was probably the most amazing experience I ever had. I loved working for Disney. Disney is an amazing corporation. Awesome. That is an amazing story, Simon. I mean, your life has just, of course, everyone's life goes through ebbs and flows, ups and downs, and that's what we're all about here on the Living by Design Show because it's all about designing your life and not getting stuck in that place, stuck in that rut, in that comfort zone that holds you back. One foot in the past and you're trying to move forward and, and it just, just it doesn't work. Simon, I have had an amazing time here with you today, and I'm just so appreciative that you've taken the time to talk to my listeners and just share yourself and your brilliance and your work and everything that's going on with you and just Harrison College and what's going on here as well. We want to thank you so much for just coming out here and being on the Living by Design show. Thank you, thank thank you. you so and much. God bless you, and may you continue to make a difference and change lives. Thank you. I'm Kathy Holloway Hill, and I want to let you know that you do contain brilliance. You were born to be brilliant. Don't be afraid to release it and shift it. Get out of that old comfort zone. Find your lane and live the life that you want to live because you should be living by design. Thank you. I'm Kathy Holloway Hill, and we'll see you next week, same time, for another episode.